Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com. Now, as a illustrator in the game industry, there are times where you'll finish a painting and then someone will say, hey, why orange? What if we did red? And then you have an issue because you've probably flattened your image at some point or made it hard to change colors or to do any of those sort of flexible things that are easier early on. Well, luckily Photoshop has some really great tools designed for photographers that can help us change the color once we're done. So let's see this in action. Here I've just duplicated the layer. It's not a layered document, it's just I've duplicated the background layer. And I'm gonna go to Image, Adjustments, Replace Color. So we're doing two different things with this dialog. The first thing we're doing is telling Photoshop what we want to replace. For that, I will click on the orange. And then the second part down here is we're saying what color we want to turn it to. So I'm going to turn it to something very different. We'll go with a blue. Now there's a problem. You can see it did a good job on the top. It, it did a great job down here, in fact. But what it didn't get was the area where that's in shadow. Because the original color, as you can see here, is sort of illuminated and then in shadow. And those are almost two different colors. Well, luckily what I can do in here is add additional target colors. So at first I gave it that one swatch here, you can see. Well, with this eyedropper tool, if I hold down shift, I can click on this additional color and it adds it into the group. And as you can see, immediately that updated and gave us much more of the effect we're looking for. So we essentially gave it two target colors, bright orange and dark orange. And we said, take anywhere you see that on the canvas and give it this new color instead. And so I can, in real time, change both the uh, destination color, if you will, the, the goal, and I can also change this selection, the where is it doing the colorizing. In addition to that, I have this fuzziness slider, and this is just sort of a, a choke. It's deciding um, where is the border. So you can tighten it up by moving it left, or you can sort of soften it out by moving it right. I found that fuzziness is actually less useful than just adding extra colors to the selection. So here you can still see there's a little bit of orange peeking through. So I'm gonna once again, hold on shift and eyedropper click on that. And then pull my fuzziness down a little bit to the left. And there you can see that's a pretty good replacement. I guess I'll also grab this last little bit there so there we go. I found all the areas that were orange on the entire image, and they're this new blue color. So when I'm finally happy with everything, I hit OK, and the changes are finalized. Now, sadly, this is not an adjustment layer, which is to say this is a permanent change. I can hide the layer, but it is still a flattened change that I can't manipulate this target blue after the fact. In fact, that's why I made this duplicate layer in the first place. I knew that if I didn't get it quite right, I'd want to be able to go back to that original orange. So this extra layer is just really a safety mechanism for me. So you might say, okay, well, this looks like just a really ideal scenario because you have such flat orange. Well, I'm going to go to a different image in the same series that clearly has a lot more complexity. And we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'll duplicate the layer first, go to image adjustments, replace color. And on this one, I'm going to do the orange again, but you can see there's a lot more oranges. So it's a trickier replacement. So I'll start with that right there. And then I like to turn on the replacement color right away, just so I can see what's happening. And once again, I'll make this a blue color. That's a good one. So now I'm going to go and add additional target color. So I'll hold down shift and click, and I'll keep clicking on these orange areas until I've got pretty much everything. It's not bad. And then I'll adjust my fuzziness to make sure I'm getting a nice roll off there. Okay. So I'll confirm that. What did that take? 20 seconds, 30 seconds? If you come from a traditional painting background, this seems like absolutely cheating. You can see it's not perfect. There was a nicer range of value and subtlety in the previous image. But this is blue now. 
and I did it once I was finished. The ability to make a radical change like color after the fact is hugely powerful if you need to make designs. If you don't know what you're doing when you start out and then something changes midway through, this is a lifesaver. So I encourage you to try it out. Go take an old finished image you already have and replace a color. It is so cool. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.